hello everyone in this video i will be sharing you java interview question and answers which i have encountered in my career and how i have answered them when i have encountered those questions and if you are an experienced guy 101 percent there are chances that you will encounter these questions in all of your interviews so let us start with the first question that is what are solid principles so for that question how do i answer so solid principles are the object related object oriented design concepts relevant to software development solid is an acronym for five design principles like it stands for single responsibility principle o for open close principle l for liskov substitution principle i for inter interface segregation and d for dependency inversion principle and after that i will explain what is single what does it mean with single responsibility principle like each class uh, according to single responsibility principle each class should be responsible for single part or single functionality in the system and o like open closed circuit principle uh, which state that software or component should be open for extension but not for modification then comes list of substitution principle object of a superclass should be replaceable with the objects of its subclass without breaking the system and the interface segregation means like no clients or no class should be forced to depend on method that is it, that it doesn't not use and fifth one dependency inversion like how high level models should not depend on low level models or both like vice versa like low level models should not depend on the high level models everything should be dependent on abstraction so this is how i answer this question then comes there there might be few people who who may counter question this like where exactly in your application you have used it so you have to say like uh, if uh, if the same question is asked to me like where have you used this principle like or any one of the principle they can ask uh, where have you used single responsibility like I, then at that time i explain them like taking example of any of my service class that, that is related to customer so all the customer related things we do that in that customer in that customer service class like there are departments if at all uh, department services there so only department related operations will perform there so i'll give such kind of example and there can be a complete uh, counter question saying have you ever seen that uh, solid principles getting breaked in your applications yes uh, there might be chances i have seen particularly in my applications that in many classes uh, we we unnecessarily implement few interfaces like we we need only few methods from that interface but that interface will be having 10 15 methods and in the implementation classes in the oh sorry in the implementation methods will be directly uh, writing one logger or will directly uh, writing one uh, what i can say a comment saying that this method will never be called like that things we can see so that time this gets breaked so this is how i answer uh, like how what are solid principles like coming to the next question the next question is what are oops concepts or what are the main oops concepts so i usually go with four things like abstraction encapsulation polymorphism and inter inheritance so there are association composition aggregation as well but mostly i go with this four only like what is inheritance inheritance is a process where one class acquires the properties of another encapsulation in java is mechanism of wrapping up the data and code together as a single unit and here there can be a counter question like how do we how do we um, uh, get achieve encapsulation so by using private variables and public setters and getters we will uh, we achieve the encapsulation then comes abstraction what is abstraction abstraction is a methodology methodology of hiding the implementation details from the user and only providing the functionality to the user so what abstraction actually means like uh, we are hiding the uh, what i can say the co uh, complex logic from the end user simply we can say that then comes polymorphism polymorphism is nothing but the ability of a variable or function or object to take multiple forms like depending upon the object that it is acting the method performs the same method acts differently there are two types of polymorphism again like dynamic polymorphism and static polymorphism so dynamic polymorphism like at the compile time itself you know what will happen which method will get executed but in uh, dynamic polymorphism uh, 
it is a different case like uh, at the runtime on what object the uh, it is uh, the method is getting called uh, that method will get executed so this was about the oops concept and you can uh, give the definition of class object everything comes under this i usually prefer going with these four things like in inheritance encapsulation abstraction and polymorphism so mostly uh, interviewers are happy with this. coming to the next question next question is difference between comparator and comparable in java so one of the most important question to check uh, whether you have had some experience on this or not so firstly coming to the difference so basically these two interfaces are used to use for sorting so if at all we want to go for natural sorting we go with comparable and if at all we want to have a customized uh, ordering or sorting we, we go with comparator and comparator uh, what i can say we have compare method which take two uh, arguments method arguments are uh, comparable is uh, uh, have is having compare to method uh, we can uh, and comparable interfaces in java util and comparable interfaces from java dot lang package uh, when i have to uh, like this is one of the like i said uh, this is one of the major difference i say whenever uh, whenever i have to answer this question like whenever i have access to a class uh, then i go with comparable uh, if it are, i am not having access to the class directly uh, then uh, or else if at all i am reading a class from from jar i am getting that class then i'll go with comparator so because of uh, whenever a class extends implements comparable in the same in the same class we need to uh, have that comp we need to work the compare to method and we need to give our logic but coming to comparator we can have a separate class and by mentioning the class type we can have different comparator class all together so this is uh, how i answer so why coming to the next question what is the difference between interface and abstract class in java so before java 8 uh, there were huge differences between comparator uh, uh, sorry between interface and abstraction like a uh, interface in interface we used to have only abstract method but uh, in abstract class we used to have abs both abstract and concrete methods so now with the java 8 uh, what the difference has mostly erased the what i can say the, the, the difference is minimized now uh, but still there are few things that remains like uh, uh, still a class can extend only one class but it can implement different interfaces multiple interfaces and what i can say we can we cannot we still don't have constructor inside interface what we can have a constructor inside abstract class and we can uh, if at all there is a main method uh, i think we can run even abstract class but that is not possible with the interface so these are the differences that i say whenever i am uh, whenever i have encountered this question so this is about the uh, differences coming to the next question difference between fail safe and fail fast iterators in java so as the name suggests fail fast and fail safely fail fast fail immediately so what does that mean so whenever a fail uh, like a fail fast iterator throws concurrent modification exception as soon as it detect any change on the collection object that uh, we are iterating or that we are traversing this is because it internally maintains a mod count so number of objects that are present if at all anything is getting added or anything is getting removed at that time this mod count will change and which in turn uh, that uh, says that suppose there is some problem in that iterator that i uh, you are traversing currently and immediately it will throw co concurrent modification exception but fail safe uh, works differently it traverses over the like uh, a copy of the uh, collection object it doesn't traverse on the original collection but it traverses on the copy so fail stays works like we can say like fail fast iterator works on the live collection live object but whereas a uh, fail safe works on the copy of the object so this is how we can answer this and you uh, like we use fail safe iterator when we are not bothered about collection to be modified during iteration as fail fast iterator will not allow that so if at all uh, there is a scenario like uh, even though the objects are changing in the inside the collection uh, and if if we don't want to uh, throw an exception at that time we will go with fail safe iterator it just by having copy of uh, there is my method so we can use that method and say that do that coming to the next question can we override private 
or static methods in java so to be honest uh, this is a bit tricky question uh, private to be honest we cannot because the scope itself will not come into the chi uh, child class so we cannot override a straightforward answer but static method uh, it's a bit tricky so whenever we are having a same static method inside child class so basically we can have that uh, but what happens here is uh, it will over, uh, over uh, like what I can it will hide the parent class object parent class method so that is one more important interrogation like uh, what uh, like what is method hiding comes into picture method hiding also it's the same thing like we are having a uh, both uh, is static method bo both inside a parent class and inside a child class and child class will hide the parent class uh, static method so as said uh, we cannot override private methods as the scope itself is not accessible the scope itself is not there to override so the next question is what is an association aggregation and composition so this mostly this mainly comes under oops concepts only but uh, still uh, this this is being asked as a theoretical question you can say so this is how we can explain so association is a relationship where all the objects have their own life cycle and there is no owner let us take an example of teacher and student like uh, multiple students can associate with a t single teacher and a single student can associate with multiple teachers but there is no ownership between the objects and both have their own life cycles the relationship can be one to one one to many many to one one like that so that is what is association and coming to aggregation aggregation is nothing but a specialized form of association where all the objects have their own life cycle but there is an ownership and child object cannot belong to another parent object so example is there like department and teacher we can take and we can explain that coming to composition composition also is a specialized form of aggregation and it is like uh, the child object cannot uh, sustain without the parent or uh, we can take house and rooms example a room cannot individually serve a uh, survive if at all there is a house then there are rooms if it is there is no house the rooms will also not be present so this is how we can this is how i answer so next question is how do you override when do you override hash code and equals method so most of that we directly say whenever you we use hash map we override hash code and equals method but uh, to be honest we can it's, it depends basically like whenever necessary we 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 override this especially if you want to do an equality check based upon business logic rather than object equality like if at all i am going to say like two employee objects are same only if their employee id is same so i will override hash code and equals method in the equals method i will write the logic like if at all these two uh, uh, content is same of the ids then these two objects should the equals method should return to one we, we are saying that these two objects are equal and one more point to add is also like overriding both this method is a must if you are if you use them as a key in hash map like this is the most this is the first answer that people give like uh, whenever we are using uh, something as a key then we go for overriding hash code and equals method like as part of equals hash code contract in java we we when we override equals or we must override hash code as well so that this is the answer that i give so coming to the next question like what is the impact like what is the performance impact if at all we are not overriding hash code method so basically uh, hash collision there are high chances that hash collision will happen like as per my knowledge a poor hash function will result in the frequent collision in hash map which eventually increase the time of adding an object or getting an object on the hash map but in if at all we are using java 8 this is minimized like after a certain threshold instead of linker list uh, what we have uh, like we use binary tree now so so which will like what what you can say like uh, the performance uh, a, a bit uh, is increased even though a poor hash code method is written uh, as it is using tree uh, tree binary tree so it won't have that much impact coming to the next question how does substring inside string work so this is one of the important interview question if you are having really two to like two to four years of experience candidates so how does it works so basically substring create a new object out of source string by taking a portion of original string 
the reason why they ask this question is uh, earlier to java 1.7 this used to work in a different way so whenever we used to do a substring method uh, it used to get uh, like uh, like what I, what we can say like hold the reference of the original character array which means that even a substring of like a two to three character can prevent one gb character array from garbage collection but uh, like by holding a strong reference there so that was a problem in uh, string substring method so after this issue was resolved in 1.7 uh, like now a new object is created that is a drawback but still uh, like the above mentioned problem is resolved like uh, holding the strong references removed from the original uh, character array so this is our substring method next question is what is try with resource in java 7 java like basically in java this is one of the feature that was introduced in java 7 so before java 7 there was no auto resource management like we should explicitly close the resource whichever we are using so usually it was done in the finally block of try cache statement this approach used to cause memory leak at times when we forgot to close the resource but from java 7 uh, we can we can create resources in the try block and use it java takes care like basically it is you know the resources are implementing auto closable interface so that will take care of closing the resource automatically so that is what is try with the resource instead of uh, uh, we concentrating on the closing of resource uh, the framework automatically take care of that thing. explain about class loader in java one of the important question again java class loader is a program that loads byte code program into memory when we want to access any class we can create our own class loader by extending class loader class and overriding class load class and string name method like basically overloading class load class method we can over we can have our own class loader so after that basically there will be a counter question like what are the different types of class loader so coming to the different types of class loader first one is bootstrap class loader it loads jdk internal classes typically loads rt.jar and other core classes then comes extension class loader it loads classes from jdk extension directory usually java home lib x ext whatever present in that in this directory so those are loaded as part of this then comes system class loader it loads classes from the current class path that can be set while invoking a program using class path command line options so these are some questions that i wanted to share uh, as part of this series and there are many to come uh, like uh, as the video is becoming big so i thought of sharing it in, in bits and pieces and thank you for watching i hope you like this video or you this video might help you in checking your interviews thank you for watching